<laughs> Welcome to Ninon Speaks. Well, I just had a test run on Ninon Speaks, but anyway, I'm back again. Here I am. Absolutely incredible. Of course, you know where I am. I'm in Las Vegas, which is the, you know, entertainment place of the world. And of course, the music industry of the world. And I always have um, unusual and great guests that have been around um, quite a little while and uh, they're coming back on the scene, which they never really left. But I have... Um, I have Raphael Irati with me. He's very, very well known in Las Vegas. Um, actually, probably um, that I'm going to find out. World known. Um, Raphael, how are you? I'm fine. It's great he's to be got, here. He's got this great smile. He's, he look. He looks at you first and then acknowledges it. So you get this lovely <laughs> smile. So how is Vegas treating you at the moment? We're going through all these crazy things. These two years of non-entertainment, and yeah. now we're all coming back as a rush, and you know, and now we're going to try to collect ourselves again. Me being one of them. Well, yeah. I mean, um, uh, I'm not uh, after playing the drums since I was eight years old, you know. <laughs> I didn't know that. So we're yeah. going to find out a lot about Raphael that I don't know about because I never pre-interview. So here we go. Yeah. So eight years old? Eight years old, I started playing. And then professionally at uh, 13. Wow. And um, Professionally at 13. Oh, well, I, wow. I always say professionally because if, if I get paid for it, then... That's professional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. And you got paid at 13. Oh, yeah. Do you remember how much you got paid? Yeah, hundred dollars. Like, no, no, hundred dollars would have been a thousand dollars back then. Oh yeah, you know, like, we're not so, that old. Come but on. I mean, it was like it was like forty dollars. That was a lot for a thirteen-year-old for doing something for thirty minutes. I thought was, uh, I went, oh my gosh. Did you, you know. realize at that time, say, well, this is getting paid well. Maybe I'll start doing this for the rest of. I'm thinking well, from. You know, I know. didn't, but my father did. He's, he, he, <laughs> and he's still a voice in my head, by the way, you know, he, um, he said to me, he goes, um, um, you know, you, you need to just keep practicing because he could see the money side. Of yeah, well, no, it. no, it was, it was more of, of like, um, don't just take it as fun, work on it. And then if you get to a certain age where you go, boy, I really love this. Well, you're going to be prepared. What a great father you had. Yeah. So he was, yeah. he knew you liked it and he obviously knew you were good at it. So he encouraged you to sort of maybe he this could. He always encouraged me. And then I signed a, a, a record deal with, uh, at 15 with a, a very well-known group back in New England uh, in Connecticut called The Crossroads. And they had a hit record out the year before and all that. And of course, they were all in their mid-20s. I thought they were ancient. You know, you I guess it's 13 years old. <laughs> but I was, 15, old. I was 15 then, you know. Yeah. And um, and so when they would tour or do, do stuff out of town and all that, uh -huh. well, my father had to sign me out of school. Yes. You know, and so. He and would, then sign the release papers for you to play. Uh, you know, so it was like, um, <laughs> it was just wonderful because he, he said, keep just. Keep Look at it as a possible career. Be serious. At about that it. time, because um, I know you sing now. At that time, were you singing as well? I was always singing. Yeah. Oh, you were always singing. Yeah. So you were. I acting... even sang with with that group. Oh, really? They yeah. invited you to come in and sing. I as sang well. and played the drums with the show. I oh. I pretty much played even coming up all the way to coming out here to Vegas in 1979. Uh, I ended up playing a few years later with Wayne Newton. At, oh my at, goodness! Yeah, for a couple of years. Do you feel that you had the breaks with? I mean, you know, to get into Wayne Newton, you know, this is what uh, um, entertainers that are coming into, you know, Vegas especially. This is what they hope for to play with all these, you know, stars and everything. Oh else. yeah, yeah. So sure. how did you? I mean, how did you get into that? Who did you? Who did you know? That, well, <laughs> well, I did know his drummer, Adam Ah, Sandel, see, fabulous musician, and. Uh, and a, a Christian brother, you know, he yeah. was like, you know, and um, he uh, he told me, he said to to me and it was kind of it was kind of funny the way he did this. He, he said uh, he goes, um, um, we had known each other for a year or so. Yeah. And um, you played not together, but you played. Well, yeah. And I went to see Wayne show with yeah, him he, playing. Yeah, and all that kind yeah of thing. absolutely. And and so he said, uh, hey, uh, Wayne wants to meet you tomorrow night. I said, really? Now I had just sung the the logo song for Channel Thirteen in the studio, 
I was kind of the voice of Channel of 13. Of Channel 13. Oh, really? 13 territories. Now, how old were you at this particular time? 20, 21? You must be pretty young. Well, 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 I was in my late 20s by now. Yeah. And, um, and so he, I'm thinking, maybe he wants me to sing on something or whatever like that. Because I had already been playing on a, in, you know, in a couple of shows sure. that I had put together myself here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and all. So I had no idea. What he wanted so, you so for. Wayne, so, were you excited? I mean, were you like, well, I'm nervous. Well, Both. <laughs> well, it was funny because I was, I was sitting in with a, with a show that was at the barge in Oh Caesars. yeah, I know the barge very well. Okay. Yes, so yes. I was sitting in with that show, playing the drums and singing. And then after I had finished that, that night, I just went to the main room, you know, and yeah. saw Wayne at Caesars. Right. And still had no idea what, what he is what he had me. in yeah. mind so i was it was it was kind of exciting fun. yeah kind sure. of and, everything. And, uh, and 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 he was always very gracious you know and he's still to this day he's a dear friend i um i actually saw him recently but that's another story yes it, he was great that show was great and um so we, i go in his dressing room after the show and and adam comes in with me and i meet him and all and he says uh okay so when can you start Oh my goodness. I go, what? <laughs> like, Hello. What? What's going on there? <laughs> I and, love it. And um and I said, um, so um, you know, it, but Adam had hinted to me that he was going to be, he was going with some like a jazz group to Europe or something. He was gonna go on a tour, but I still had no idea. I, you that know, you might be the yeah. one going with the tour, yeah, no, with Wayne, you with know. Wayne, yeah, and um, and so I said, um, well, um, when do you need me? I'm just playing the game, right? Yes. <laughs> now he goes, he goes, you have ten days. I went, okay. Now I already got it. Now I already, I already know. You what understood what's, yeah, and, you and uh, I said, okay, and so, and I was so glad that they didn't know I sang because playing playing with his orchestra. It was a full, legitimate 37 piece orchestra. I was gonna say in those days they had big orchestras. It yeah. wasn't like three piece band. It was a big, no, no, it, was it was an a orchestra. orchestra. Yeah. And it's a different way to play. I mean you I well you've you got have all to you... kind of command it. You've got to be deliberate. Yes. You've got and, to play your part yeah. and also come in at the same time or right time or whatever because you've got to exactly. consider all of these other people. Exactly. Wow. And um were you nervous about that? No. I've never been nervous. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Playing. I don't know yeah. why, or even singing or being on TV or something like that, you know. <laughs> I mean, they say in the business you can use your nerves um, and, it, you know, it helps you. But, you know, if you don't get nervous, you're like I am. I, I don't get nervous. I just kind of throw myself in there. You like it, you don't like it. <laughs> well, it's, cause I, well, I think it, it harkens back to my father. You know, he, he, he gave always, you the confidence. It, not only that, he always said, he says, make it fun for you. Like, right. you know, like. Like, even when it's not fun, you know. Make it fun. Make it fun for enjoy, you. Enjoy and have that yourself. And have that joy about yes, it, you know, enjoy inside. yourself with it. And, um, and so I looked at everything that way, you know, oh. all through the years. I mean, I had a, this was um, after Wayne show, I had gotten married. So how long were you with the Wayne show? I was 30. I turned 30 when 30 I. 30 when you were in there. And how long? Uh, it was 83, 84, almost two years. Almost two years. That's a long time. Wow. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you. Well, Great I, experience. But I thought, well, he's going to be, you know, here in town. All I got to <laughs> do is drive to the thing. Well, I didn't realize that he wanted to do the most extensive tour that he'd ever done that year I got with him. But I didn't realize how much fun that was going to be. Yeah. But anyway, well, it was, you know. I'm sure that was. <laughs> So then you got married. <laughs> well, then I got married and all that and moved up north. I I wanted to build a, my house. I wanted to build this house in like Minden up there. You know, like you walk out the front door and there's Job's Peak, Heavenly Valley, you know. Yes. And um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so what happened is I um, I started getting involved in this church up there and I was singing in 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 all of that and 
Did you sing in get, the choir and all that stuff? No, no, no. Just I just sang by yourself. Sing by, your, uh, sing your a special song, song by song, myself. Yes, yes, yes. And I would do these little concert things where I would give my testimony, my story, and then Were sing a song. Were you kind of religious before that? Always. Always religious. Okay. Uh, o- only so it's because, always followed you. Well, I... Oh, you followed it? No. What happened is I've, I've had these miraculous healings over the years. When I was a kid, five years old, I got a... Um, uh, a, a really uh, bad case of rheumatic fever. Ooh. Within the first two months, it had already damaged my uh, aortic valve and my mitral valve. And the doctors told my my parents that I wasn't going to make it. Well, wasn't and, me wrong? <laughs> Just guess who was sitting with me? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, a dear, my dear, um, very religious uh, grandmother came up uh, from New York after we had moved to Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Um, and she prayed for me like no one's ever prayed for me. And, and even at five years old, I, I knew I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. prayed for right here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and anointed with something. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Whatever she did, she did the right thing. And it was a thing. lot. It was a lot. <laughs> you know? and, um, well, she's a grandmother. <laughs> and uh, I mean, a month later, when they already told my parents. That you might not make it. He, no, he's not going to make it. Plain and simple. And uh, back then they used to take the kids out of the house so that no one else no, would we'll get it. it. Yeah. And they would put them in these wards and in, in this particular in hospital. hospitals, yeah, you know. Yeah. And Isolate you. A lot of kids just passed away, you know. Oh. Uh, and um, and my and my father told the doctor, he said, uh, he goes, Hey, look, if he's if he's gonna die, he's gonna die at home. Oh, you know what I mean? So oh, you them, had a beautiful father. Oh, yeah, he was something. So anyway, oh. my, my gra- grandmother come, prays for me, all that. A month later, I'm in school. And here you are right now. Yeah. And he's telling his story. So let's go back. You're still way needed for two years. And then after that, what I really want also want to ask you about, you know, you, you seem to have exceeded your life, and you went out and you built you, you built the home. Oh, yeah. Built the home in Minden and all that. And then um, and then I met. Big uh, house. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, lovely. I can imagine and uh because you got big thoughts that's kind of how you oh well, yeah was, <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh thank god it could pay for it with big money back yeah. then you know <laughs> so well, anyway, you don't, you know yeah so anyway what happened was i i started getting involved in this church and i was singing and doing all this kind yeah. of stuff well somebody had called you know the 700 club you know that yes that show on yes. cbn and says, you got to have this guy on your show, you know. It wasn't a week later I get a call from them. Hey, can you come down this next week? We'll fly you out here. We'll put you in a hotel and everything. We want you to be on the show. Oh, my goodness. Um, I did the show, and it was a fabulous experience, unbelievable. You know, Raphael, listening to you so far, it seems like everybody, um, you kind of have an angel around you, number one, and I think it's because of your disposition. And everybody seems to come to you and want you. And, and that, that has to be one of the greatest things for entertainers because usually you have to go out, you have a manager, and they have to find the jobs and do all this. You didn't really have to. They came to you. Almost every time. I mean, just well, to you give you an this example. Attraction? What do, I uh, want a little bit of it, please. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, I'm singing in this church. This is after the 700 Club, Club aired. Yeah. Another Hollywood. one. And then my... Phone kept ringing off the hook. I mean, you wouldn't believe. Well, seven hundred. I mean, come on. Every every organization wanted you. It was like, oh, can you you come and uh, sing and give your testimony at the Women's Aglow Conference in <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Illinois? You know, I mean, it's, they were probably always very big ones as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, one yeah. thing after another. I couldn't do them all. I mean, honestly, well, it was no. like it was nuts. And how did that make you feel inside? I mean, you know, there you are, this young man out there, and sort of, you know, you're in demand. Well, you know, you're like was, a Wayne Newton. Wayne Newton was in demand all the time, and now you kind of stepped into those little shoes and things. It, it was weird. It, it, it just felt like, okay, this is what I'm doing now, plain and simple. Yes. And um, so anyway, so I'm singing in church like two weeks later at the same church after all that and everything. Well, then this this gentleman comes in with his wife, and he comes up and he introduces himself, and he that, that he was a Hollywood producer, and. He had moved his office to Reno, Nevada, you know, yeah. and um, and all that. And because uh, the church, the church was in Reno, even yeah. though I was living in Minden, yeah, you know. 
And um, um, so he says, I, I, I want to meet with you tomorrow, if you don't mind. I have a TV show uh, that I'm putting together, and you would be perfect as the host. There we go again. So See? I said, okay. You know, <laughs> and anyway, so I, I did the show. It was yeah. called Tribute and, and all of that. But you have to understand, I already met Danny Gans in 1980. Oh, so this is where Danny Gans comes Well, we were already, play. I was going down to L.A., and he would come up. So you'd my, already met him. You already well, I already met a... him even before Wayne, because uh, it was 1980 when I met Danny. Okay. And um, and we just said, hey, we're going to do a show together someday. You know, one of those. Well, kinds, yeah. We're going to do. We're, we're going to yeah. do something. And you know, if you put it out there like you do, and especially if you're into this God thing and you believe in all this stuff, yeah, then it it kind of works. It well, it worked because we we kept that dream alive for a number of years until because he was he was doing the sitcom that open house sitcom and i was doing the tv thing and then i was doing the i was you know traveling and doing all of these uh shows events and these events and, and know, these all that church stuff. and singing and you were so well, you were busy so we he called up one day he said we got to do this i said okay let's make it work let's do let's, it let's do it right yeah so we started doing uh just the the big corporate shows like all over the world. I'm not talking about like in New York or no, Chicago you were, or something. You were like that. everywhere. I mean, you one day traveling. we would be in, you know, Dallas, Texas doing a <laughs> doing a um, uh, a convention for 10,000 nurses. <laughs> oh, how exciting. <laughs> no, died and gone died and gone to heaven. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you. It's the, it's the first time I ever saw Danny come out on stage and get a standing ovation. <laughs> He didn't even do anything yet. And they're even... going, Ooh, oh. you know. <laughs> Talk about giving you encouragement. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, man. And so, um, um, anyway, we're doing these Incredible huge, shows all over the world. All over the world. And then once a year, we would come to Vegas and do an opening act. And the first one uh, that I did with Danny was um, was with Joan Rivers at the, uh, the old uh, Desert Inn. Yeah. Know? Jennifer, and she was oh, amazing. She, yeah. Oh, she was something. She and I want to tell you something. She, um, there's this whole other side of her besides the entertainer. Yeah, like, you know, and yes, she used is. to in, she used to invite Danny and I because she knew we were close friends and stuff. Like that. She would invite Danny and I after the show to come to her dressing room because she always had a whole group of entertainers or people that are yeah, came to see the show see and have a little party. <laughs> yeah, you know, so she would, she'd always come, well, do you want a cup of tea or something like that? Yeah. I mean, she would make it, you yeah, know, it wasn't yeah. like, you know, yeah, somebody she was like your mom. Yeah. She was like your mom, you know yeah. what I mean? They and, say uh, that about her. They say that she was a very, in private life, she was a very wonderful woman. And, wonderful, you know, very yeah, sweet. And, and, so and, nice and then she would, um, and she, she was very bright about Danny's show like she she knew why we did certain things yes. in the show when we did them yeah she goes I really like when you that did part. that that you means know, she that. was concentrating and oh, watching the show yeah and um and um and all that so th that was an incredible experience and um like I said once a year we'd come to Vegas and do an opening yeah. act. so years go by how long were you with Danny Gaines Ooh, counting the corporate years then Broadway yeah then we came here, yeah. and we were here for 13 years before he passed, and and he won Entertainer of the Year every year for 13 oh my, years. Well, but he no one's ever it. done. No one's ever done that. Yeah. And um, so altogether, it was uh, almost. Let's see, it was right, right around 25 years. 25, 30 years. It has to be because you knew him before. Yeah. You ever got? I'm saying before you ever got together in the entertainment field. So you just knew each other as friends, and you know. Calling yeah. up and saying, "Yes, we're going to do a show," and then you end up doing. Oh yeah, one it, your, was, it was one of your biggest shows, I guess it, it it was. Well, Wayne Newton was probably very big too. Oh so well, at the you've time, done all he big was shows. the he was you the know Mister Las Vegas, the yes. number one entertainer yes. in town. Yeah, and uh, but then of course when Danny showed up, there, you know, like like Steve Wynn would say, he, he goes. There just wasn't anybody else in the main room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I love it. Um, because he was extraordinary. I, I've never met. But he died at quite a young age. How, he he was mean, 53. That's a very young age. Yeah. Very young age. And he just passed away. 
Yeah, he well, he had a blood disease. And strangely oh. enough, my older brother uh, passed away of the same blood disease in the same year. Oh. But my brother had it for wow. 20 years. He had that. Disease. That, that disease. But I saw Danny go through what my brother went through in 20. I watched Danny go through it in and five. And you knew all, all about it, obviously, because yeah, of and, your brother. And it was just, uh, but he was doing well. He was being treated. So you had and, kind of these ups and downs throughout your life with the accidents and different things that happened to you. Oh. And and there's quite a few. We could have another show completely about all, all the things that he's, that's happened to him. Mm. It's amazing, which we're, we're talking about positive things at the moment, yeah. which is <laughs> talking about the entertainment side of his life. Yeah. So now Danny Gaines is no longer in your life, and God bless his soul. Um, so now, you know, you're kind of left, you know, because he died suddenly. So you're kind of left in, in the wings there of, of, of now you've got to cope with your your life and what you're going to do. What? How did you get out of that? Um, there was always something. Happening. Happening, always. Mm -hmm. um, I did a, a show right after Danny's passing. I did a show with a couple of the guys from Danny's show. Yeah. And it was wonderful, yeah. a wonderful yeah. show. And it was called Echoes, Echoes of the Sixties. Echoes. Oh, how lovely! And it was how wonderful. unusual. Huh? All the sixties music. You yes, yes. You sang. Cool. And and basically the whole Woodstock thing. Yeah, you know? oh, sure. Um, Woodstock days. And uh, that was wonderful. But then I, um, I kept thinking like you know I, I've, I've kind of done this already like and and I'm. Uh, maybe you want I want to do something else. I just wanted to concentrate on singing rather than playing the drums and, and yes. all of that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And um, and that's kind of where I where I went to. Yeah. I started to just sing, and then of course, um, I met uh, a Pastor Rob Wright, and and then I started singing. And Pastor in, in, Rob Wright, by the way, has his own church um, in North Las Vegas, and I happened to be there last Sunday. It was his birthday. I'm not going to say how old he was because he looks pretty cool. Um, and it was it was amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a it was thing. a lot and, of fun. And yeah. actually, um, Raphael sings there. You do all the singing. Yeah, you I'm, all, I'm kind of a musical the, director. Of, yeah, and you kind, he's a musical director, director, but he's also kind of puts the whole thing together. Yeah, you kind of put involved yourself, which is kind of your element because you've never you've never really left your religious side of life. No, I, I well, I couldn't. It, you know, it's I, I actually had a. Um, Somebody asked me in an interview one time, they said, um, well, uh, through all of the things that, you know, uh, how did you keep the faith? You know, I said, I said you just kept it. I said, just... well, it was a lot easier, I think, uh, in in these situations, because even though in 79, when I came to Vegas, yeah. the year before that, I was doing a show up in the Pocono Mountains, you sure, know, yeah. beautiful, yeah. like supper club type place. And um, and after we did the, the first week there at the thing, I collapsed right after the show, right on the stage, just boom. And I was feeling perfectly fine. <clears throat> I ended hmm. up in the hospital up there for 10 days. They did all these tests and they said, look, you, you need to go wherever home is. You need to go to home. And just relax and, and collect we'll, yourself. We'll give, we'll give you all of the information, but you've been diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And um, I said, I said, okay. You know. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know. What what you know. organs has that affected? What am I affected? And with? so I so I I bought this little car because so I didn't have my car with me. I came. We all came up, you know, together. Yeah. And um, so I bought this little car down the street at the little used car lot for two hundred dollars and yeah, just like you're gonna do today <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and um and uh but i had to drive through new york to get into connecticut so i visited a friend and all this kind of stuff uh, well on the way home um there was this terrible accident on the new york thruway and traffic was backed up for miles and i was at the end and i'm sitting there going oh, okay well do I want to stay here? <laughs> do I have anything to eat? Or, you know, I'm thinking, like, you know. And and then this poor nurse, she had pulled a 24-hour shift at the hospital. She fell asleep at the wheel. And she hit me from behind, like, at about 70 miles an hour. Broke my back. Oh, my. Oh. While I'm on the way home to get the, you know. For this other illness. <laughs> so now you've got double jeopardy going on Okay, now. so anyway, long story short, 
I get home and, and, and get right into the hospital and all that kind of stuff. And they, um, they did all these tests when they had all of the documents from yeah. the other, Absolutely. Thing, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll never forget after I was, you know, in the house where I kind of grew up, you know, in the, the same Your bedroom home. actually. Yeah. And, um, but my dad n knew a lot of the doctors there at the, at the hospital. And so everything got pushed real quick, you know? Yeah. And so, um, um, I, I lay there and I, I swear to you, I was so riddled in pain from the back all the way through down to my legs, up, up through my arms, like oh from the goodness. center part of the yeah. cervical that was broken. Yeah. And, um, so I just, I just prayed. I said, I'd love to fall asleep if I could. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. he said, no, you can't yeah. fall asleep just yet. Cause I got <laughs> lots of stuff for you to do. Well, well, well it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I know. I just wanted to fall asleep. I, I was in so much pain. pain I sleep. Yes. Yes. So I, I, you know, I prayed that, could you help me to fall asleep? And, and, and oh, and by oh, the way, not I don't want to die. I'm yeah. not forever. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll clarify that. I don't want to die either. You know, all that kind of stuff. Just relieve me from the pain. Yeah. Just relieve me yeah. of the pain and everything. And, and I'm not kidding you. I mean, I mean, literally a light came into my room. Yeah. Oh my. Just I mean, a, a soft time. light came yeah. into my room and it just rested right over my head. And all of a sudden, I can hear my my father coming up the stairs and um, calling my name. And I'm thinking, what happened? Well, the sun was already up. I had fallen asleep in a second, slept through the night, oh and he was waking goodness. me up. So, so he was just coming up the stairs. You didn't know it was yeah, the morning time. I had time, no but... idea what was well, going well, on. Well, yeah. And so all of a sudden he comes in, he, and he was a little teary-eyed. And I'm, and I'm thinking, all right, it's bad, it's bad news or something, you know, like that. So I asked him straight out. I said, what did they say? And he says, they couldn't find anything. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Oh, my and goodness. And so uh, oh, broken back and everything, uh, about three weeks later, I was on tour with the show. So we're now we're back to the show business. We've done 79. We've done the 80s. And now I would like to find out a little bit more about what you're doing right now. I mean, I did see you Sunday and you're director of this church, which is absolutely lovely. And yeah, it's, a, it's Abundant church? Grace Church. Abundant Grace Church is, is in North Las Vegas. On, oh, it's off what, Durango? It's, it's, right, it's right where the where uh, Decatur meets Rancho. It's right in that. Right little, in that little corner. There. It's yeah. absolutely fabulous, wonderful. And the pastor's amazing. He's just he's just <laughs> lovely. He's he's like a great big teddy bear. And he's got this smile on his face all the time. He's yeah. absolutely it's fabulous, it, fabulous. Great big is a, you know, yeah, understatement. It, it's an understatement. He's, <laughs> no, he's six really, six. Is he six six? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that I had a photograph taken with him, and I'm I'm and I'm going oh, okay, <laughs> and I got high heels on. Believe me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, so you'd, now, you'd have to have high heels and standing on a box to uh, to get anywhere close yeah. to him. So now you know, and I've I know that you now have a partner, and and I I, I actually happened to say to Raphael, I said, Raphael, you and, and Ben should be something like the Smothers Brothers. These two together, you two together is amazing. I mean, you you, but you know they don't have any script, they don't have anything. Yeah, and you just do it ad lib together. It it. it from the very first time we sang together, we, we did some um, uh, like fundraiser for somebody. We and that was the, like one of the first things we had done out in public, like you know. Yeah. And that was a few years ago, actually. And um, um, <laughs> and and all of a sudden, we just started like we would we would sing this big opening song, you know. You're just good together. And, and, yeah. And then all of a sudden, we just started, you know, talking. Talking and, and <laughs> being uh, funny, they are the funny. That's true, and, that. and it and it just worked. You know what I mean? You could when feel things it. just work, they yeah. work. Isn't they that work. funny? Yeah. And so, um, and of course, it, it we don't plan anything. No. You know, we just we just introduce a song, or we or the next um, segment of the show. Like it could be a, a tribute to. Uh, our favorite singers or a oh. certain time frame. But you don't you know. kind of pre-interview, you don't, like I don't pre-interview anybody. I never pre-interviewed you, but I I know you, but I don't know a lot about what you've been talking about. But we don't do that because I love it. I love ad lib. I've always liked yeah. ad lib. I've always think it has a little stronger um, kind of 
hook to it. Yeah, sure. It's, it's sort of, you know, because it's, and people love that. And especially of today with the podcast and everything going around. Oh, my God. Trying to keep up with all this stuff coming from um, when they didn't have these these phones. We never knew about this. We never knew about all these computers. Right, we right. didn't. I mean, you grew up a little bit the same as, and I think I'm a little older than Raphael. But we won't talk about that. A little, a, a little a tiny bit. But anyway, um, uh, that's something else. <laughs> We don't care about that. But so now I, I've noticed that you two have got this show together. Um, yeah. Have you got, and you've obviously, how long have you been together doing this? Gosh, about uh, four years Four now. years now. So yeah. you're very into each other. You're very much knowing what each other exactly. does without even saying a word. So you can kind of go on stage and just open the whole thing up. Sure. Do you include, when you do a show on stage, do you include the audience about, you know, oh, what definitely. they think? Yeah, sure. Because the audience love that. And, yeah. you know, it's funny about an audience, and I've been in quite a few of them, that there's there's your left, your middle, and your right, and you kind of pick somebody here and somebody here and somebody here, because there's always sure. somebody that's laughing and joking with you in all these places, and that's what you pick on, isn't it? Yes. Because some people yeah. just sit there, you know, straight face, and they don't, they have no movement, but you've always got those people that you've, you know, that are excited. Exactly. And yeah. you gravitate to them. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah you play to them, and then it, it's contagious after a while. Yes. They, they people, laugh, people other people around, around them, them laugh. Exactly. Yeah, and it, yeah, and that's where you, and that's funny because people don't understand that when you, when you don't pre-interview and you don't have all this stuff, that's where you get your energy from, and it, it urges you on. Sure. I mean, it makes you look more ridiculous than you really are. <laughs> <laughs> I should have swallowed that tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about yeah, that. Okay. Made you laugh at the wrong time. <laughs> well, you know, laugh is laughter is the greatest thing in the entire world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's two, th uh, three things in this world. There is love, there is laughter, and the greatest third one is music, which really is the first one. But there's really only two things, love. We all want love and we all want music. Those are the two yeah. most important things. And of course, religion and all that stuff floats around everywhere. But that's the most important thing. So what have you got coming up and what's happening? Uh, well, with um, we, we've put this show together uh, with another singer that we're, we brought in, Larry Wayne yeah. from mm -hmm. the Phantom of the Opera. Yes. And uh, we had done a show before together. we done... We did some shows, <clears throat> and the three of us together is incredible. It's even more hilarious, oh, right? Oh. So he has a sense of humor as well. <clears throat> oh, sure he does, yeah. <laughs> and um, Who's the straight man? Are you the straight man or Ben? No, Ben. Ben is usually the, the straight, straight man. man. Yeah, because yeah. you're always kind. Of, you always got that thing. Look, see, I haven't even said anything yet, and he's laughing. <laughs> yeah. Anticipation of what I'm going to say. <laughs> I love it. So, but, anyway, so uh, now you have three of you. So now we're, we're putting this this particular show together, and we've talked to some places, you know, about this show. And it's yeah. going to be, we want to do it in the afternoon, like late afternoon, okay, like four o'clock or so, something okay. like that. And we do like an hour, an hour and fifteen minute show, and Perfect. We're, we're calling it Vintage Vegas Matinee. What a great name! Who thought of that? Uh, yeah. All of you. Well, we we all came up with the Vintage Vegas. Yes. thing and then i i threw the matinee in there yes. but uh, i love the matinee <laughs> part because well now you're actually probably going to um a uh, older crowd or a sort of 50s and up well yeah because there's not a lot of we want to do it like a supper club atmosphere you know De dennis Berno does that i don't know if you've been to his show i'm quite sure you've been to his show yeah. at south point yes and he does this show it's packed every time yeah he has all the singers though he does a different he has a talk show with singers but it's also in the afternoon. Well, this is going to be a straight out kind of supper club atmosphere where people come, Lovely. they can they can get a bite to eat and all that. And there's a little area where they can dance and all oh, of that. Oh, I love it. But we're going to be doing Oh, you're bringing back old time. Yeah. It's going to be old like time an old variety. Club. Remember the old variety? Well, I shouldn't say, do I remember? Because I don't remember them at all. <laughs> Me either. Get the straight face. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us remember anything like that. Which now we're talking about, you know, off the cuff, I guess. Of well, my girlfriend and I do. Except movies, you know. No movies. Yeah, yeah. Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> no, more like um, White Christmas. Remember the Supper oh, Club? Oh, remember? Yes, yes, yes. The Supper yes, Club yes, scene yes, and all yes. that. I love. Hang, hang in a second. I remember New York and the Supper Clubs. <laughs> oh yeah. In real life. They were amazing. So this is going to be signed a, a supper club in sort of in the late afternoon. Yeah, and, which will be perfect. And so we're we're just 
we're, we, we've got all these ideas of what we're going to put together and everything. Yes. And then there's some people that are negotiating for us. And, yes. and, and do well, I'll be there. Them. I'll support you. Ought to be wonderful. Yeah, I'll be yeah, I mean, you. Definitely. We'll, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Know? I think everything will happen. Now, um, how can anybody get hold of you to, to book you and to book Ben? Because you have this, they have this kind of comedy thing, singing thing going on. I, well, what yeah. do you call it exactly, you and Ben? It's a variety. It, it's like a variety show. It's, it's, it's a variety a, show they do, but they, they've got the straight face and the one that laughs and the whole bit. It's really yeah. absolutely amazing. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sort of something that you... Makes you laugh and makes you feel, you know, it's great to be alive. Well, it's 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 basically we have a website, RaphaelandBen dot okay. com. RaphaelandBen dot com. Yeah. Now we Remember used to that? have a name actually. We used to have a name. We used to call ourselves Vintage Vegas Voices. Vintage Vegas, Voices. but no one the could three say V's. It. No one could say we'll it. Just call it the three V's. No, but this is so <laughs> funny. We were we were at this big thing. It was this celebration of. Um, Old Vegas or something. They yeah. have it every year. So, I mean, there was about 800 people in this ballroom. And it was yeah. amazing, right? So, so the lady gets up and she goes, well, let's, let's, I've heard these guys and they're really they're something. Amazing, else. Yeah. And, and all this. And she says, okay, let's hear for the uh, Vegas, uh, the, uh, the voice, the voices of, um, uh, oh, let's hear it for Raphael and Ben. <laughs> Because she couldn't remember. She couldn't remember how to, how to, so we 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 thought, abbreviated you know, we're it. Gonna, we're going to change that. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. So, so, how can people get hold of you to to get your show going and to get things? Up? Well, like I said, you can go on online on rafaelandbenton dot com. That's your website. That's the website, and it's got our emails and our phone numbers and everything, everything there. on there, and um, and it, it it's got everything. It's, you know, Raphael is, is, is like Vegas, probably a little bit like I am as well, that we, we kind of, um, when you've got that bug in you, <laughs> which is the entertainment bug, you kind of never know when to give up and you never give up because why give up when you've got something great going and you have something great going. So don't forget to get in touch with him and um, see his show. And see, they're so funny, these two together. And I can't wait to see the third one because it, is he kind of an opera singer or something? You say? Oh, he's an opera singer. He's the opera singer of all oh, he, times. Yeah, he's absolutely. <laughs> Else. Yeah, which is which will be amazing. Which you know, Vegas is definitely still the entertainment place of the world, and of course, the music industry is. This is where it hangs out, and you know, there's no nothing like competition because I've always said oh, so much competition out there, and I always say, yeah, there's great competition out there, but I am the competition, and you <laughs> are the competition. So watch out for them, and don't forget to go to um. Now we'll go to NDD Network, which is the YouTube and and. Uh, You'll see all our shows on there. We've got another show out there called um, Off the Cuff, which is my girlfriend and a couple of old ladies out there <laughs> doing our thing. <laughs> and actually, we're getting very good reviews on it and everything and absolutely amazing. And of course, don't forget, um, we have Steve Siebel, who is my producer for the show. He's absolutely amazing. Um, we've been doing this for many, many years. And get in touch with Raphael. Thank you for watching and go to NDD Network. And of course, we're on all the other platforms. I can't mention them all. Facebook, you know, Instagram, LinkedIn. There's so many out there that you can go on to. And because of this um, app thing and everything that people, you know, pick up as you have it as well. Everybody has the same thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Raphael. You've been amazing. A little you. bit of his life history, but he's got a lot, 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 lot more. And, and, and he has a, a, a record of, of all the different things that have happened to him, which have been good. And some have been not so good, but he's got through it all. And here he is right now. We'll be right back pretty soon with Neon Speaks. Take care.